Hey everyone, welcome to a Goody Reader review video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. This is the second generation pocket book Aqua. It's yes. called the uh, Aqua 2 and it's waterproof and dustproof. Uh, we'll get into more of that in a, in a little bit, but it does have an e-ink card screen. So much like pocketbook's other e-readers that they've made pretty recently it's not using pearl or anything like that it's using a modern day um you know uh e-paper display the resolution 1024 by 758 so it's a little bit uh, underwhelming compared to uh, other pocketbook e-readers but it does have audio support uh via a cable so it's a usb to 3.5 millimeter yeah, headphone jack right. audio books uh, text to speech has a lot of things going for. We'll get into that all during the review. For now, let's take a 360 at this device. So the design is very nice. It's very different. You have this kind of uh, double border here. So you have the black that kind of you know leads down into the physical page turn buttons and the home button and the power button. It's really nicely laid out. I like the aluminum esque look to this device. It's kind of like an aluminum plate, but it ends up just being a piece of plastic. That's totally fine because it is water and dust proof. You see you have a little door for the USB um, uh, port, which is kind of unnecessary because pretty much every waterproof device out there nowadays don't really use a lot of doors. They just have the USB port open, which I don't really know how that works, but it's a very nice design and it is a it is not a flush screen and bezel, it is a sunken screen. In case you guys are interested, it's 180 grams. So this is the main UI. Uh, there's a carousel at the top yep. that shows you the books. All these books, for the most part, are preloaded. We did sideload in a book or two. Uh, you can change the carousel by hitting the manual page turn buttons or scrolling. It shows here books that were added today, cover art and stuff like that. If you go to the library, Everything is shown by cover art, and a lot of e-readers don't do that. They'll just show, like, generic type stuff. Right. This goes into an almost A2 mode-esque kind of thing where the images get really bad quality, but it allows you to do things like this and actually utilize inertia. And inertia is when you swipe, and then it kind of slowly decelerates into a stop, and then it renders. So not a lot of e-readers actually are, not even do it, are able to do that. Yeah, so there's various ways that you could like organize it. You can like search for a particular book. Uh, you can search by like by opening dates. So you can look at the book that you were say reading recently. Uh, there's an all book option like here where it'll just show like everything. So there's a lot of different ways that you can sort of like organize uh, your library shelf depending on like what you need. You can press the home button at any time to go to the home and then you have the store logo to go to the store and the settings menu. If you swipe up from the bottom you have all your kind of Android-esque apps. So you have Klondike, you have chess, you can play simple games. You can also scribble and this is something that we kind of stumbled upon. It's really responsive and we kind of, it's a shame that they didn't come with a stylus because this is really good. Like it's it's super responsive. You can switch between pens. Like, look at that. It's just bang, bang, bang. Fires away. Really good note-taking experience on a six-inch device. Yeah, and there's also a lot of games and things like that. Uh, a lot of e-readers these days have done away with, like, apps and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think it's, like, important to note that Pocketbooks runs, like, a hybrid, like, Linux, like, operating system. Right. So a lot of, like, these, like, apps, so to speak, are just, like, Linux sort of, like, features. Exactly. And they are most pocketbook e-readers have these so it's just not the aqua that yeah. has all that stuff that we showed you uh pocketbook has sort of like implemented this os across a fleet of their modern e-readers so if you like taking notes or playing chess or and things like that accessing a web browser um this could be the e-reader for you that's exactly it so we've just opened up a book here and you can do this, uh, you can change pages a myriad of different ways. You can swipe, you can tap, or you can press the physical page turn buttons. So that's really kind of leaves it up to you to do the best one that kind of fits you. So you can press the uh, settings menu and this will allow you to change the margins, the line spacing, the font itself, justification, font styles, italic, bold, lots of options. And Mike also pointed out that this has hyphenations. And what this is, is if you turn it off or on, it'll adjust the spacing in between all the words to be consistent. So instead of there being 
uh, you know, three spaces between a pawn and a, uh, they, they, they kind of condense everything so it looks very neat and organized. So that's kind of a cool feature they had there. You can also do long presses. Long presses will initiate a highlight. You can highlight, take notes, share to Google, share to Facebook. Here's the keyboard. It's not conventional QWERTY because the keys are stacked on top of each other. Typing's fast though. Typing is fast, yeah. It uh, gets the job done. You can make notes and highlights via that. We also have something called voice and we're gonna plug this into the 3.5 mil headphone adapter and show you guys what it's gonna sound like. So very simply, we're gonna use a portable speaker off camera here so we don't clutter up the shot. And we're using the included 3.5 mil headphone jack adapter that we have uh, gotten in the box. You're gonna get the cable, plug it in like so, hear the little click, and click on voice. Once upon a time, it was held to be a coarse and shocking circumstance that some of the characters in these pages are chosen from the most criminal and degraded of London's population. So it Sweet is robotic, spirit. but it's not unbearable. Like you could, you could legitimately listen to this with headphones, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't be completely bothered, right? Sure, it's not read by someone super famous, but. It works. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a standard, like, text-to-speech, like, stuff, and a lot of companies offer that sort of feature. Yeah, and this one also translates really well into music as well, so... So it's not the most bassy or the most full sound experience, but it can do it. It can play music, it can play audiobooks, it can play text-to-speech, it can do it. It's amazing. Yeah, and it has like a full DRM support for Adobe, so you can use Adobe Digital Editions aside to load in EPUB or PDFs that you have purchased from other bookstores, or audiobooks that say you've downloaded from like the public library. So the C reader is capable of, of, of a lot of different things that most e-readers um, don't even bother with anymore. Yeah. As well as PDFs, um, speaking of PDFs, the PDF experience on this is actually quite robust. So uh, looking at it from here, you can do a lot of different things like the settings menu will allow you, if I click on that, allow you to change justification, it'll allow you to do reflows. You can even do cropping if you wanna crop out certain parts of your PDF, like if you're on a textbook or something. This so also does pinch and zoom. You could then let go and still navigate around the page while you're holding on with a little mini map. Once you let go, it's only a matter of seconds for it to render. And it has the ability to long press on bodies of text and allow you to do notes, annotations, keyboards, shares. Fantastic that that allows you to do that because usually devices don't allow you to do that on side loaded PDFs. Yeah. Um a lot of e-readers struggle with our like monsters manual yeah. here and um, the fact that the pocketbook aqua 2 uh, takes it in stride is is quite surprising fantastic um, even Kobo I think does less of a job yeah. with their PDF rendering I engine than so. pocketbook does so this doesn't have a glow light button or anything like that you actually have to click on the top bar bring up the glow light settings, and then you can change via the slider bar. If you slide it all the way down to the bottom, it actually doesn't turn off, so it's very Amazon-y in that sense, where it, it's kind of always on, but um, you can put it down to a, an absolute minimum, and it, it doesn't affect the battery life, really. Also, you can't really turn it off and on with a button, and it, you can't kind of change it on the fly. You always have to go back into that... Uh, that setting but looking at the experience I mean it's top to bottom left to right perfectly distributed um, Michael pointed out that they're putting their uh, LEDs on the bottom and it looks like we have eight eight LEDs but you can see a little bit of extreme light on the bottom but otherwise it is perfectly distributed if you're looking for a waterproof e-reader uh, from a company uh, that has been in the game a really long time we do recommend the pocketbook aqua too for that very reason Drop a comment below, let us know what you think about uh, this e-reader. And thanks for watching everyone. For goodyreader.com, my name is Michael. This is Peter.